Well, I want to thank the Mars for their mad science update for today. What they want to do is they want to take a uh, icebreaker and they'll put it out there in the summer up in the Arctic and let ice as ice forms around it and they'll uh, just drift with the ice for a year. Uh, trying to get more accurate weather forecasts for uh, Great Britain. That's, this sounds really kooky. Trapped ice breaker will be carried by slowly flowing ice on 2,500 kilometer journey around across the North Pole while scientists take measurements and make observations that have never been able to that have never been possible before in the harsh Arctic winter. Well, I thought you said that the Arctic is warming up. Hmm. The Arctic scheme is inspired by an 1893 expedition of Norwegian explorer Fridtjof Nansen, who trapped his vessel, the Fram, in sea ice and all the gradual drift of the ice sheet and carrying him to the North Pole. Although Nansen ended up hopelessly off course and abandoned the mission, Fram eventually popped out near Greenland, proving that parts of the Arctic ice sheet are flowing gradually southwards. Now more than a thousand, one hundred years later, scientists from 50 research institutions, including British Antarctic Survey, Playing sail a huge icebreaker polar stern into the North Pole, trap it in the sea ice, lots of drifts along the ice sheet for a year. Lovely! So, you people are actually going to stay on this ship? I wouldn't. Satellite research stations will also be placed around the ship, simultaneously carrying more than 100 scientific experiments and biggest research project ever carried out in the Arctic. Team wants to collect detailed climate data which cannot be gleaned from satellites to improve weather forecasts and climate models. <coughs> the bold venture called Mosaic multidisciplinary drifting observatory for the study of Arctic climate will set sail in 2019. Co-leader Professor Marcus Rex from Alfred Wegener Institute in Potsdam, Germany said plans to travel in summer when sea ice is thin and sea extent is much smaller. Why is the sea extent smaller if the ice is smaller? That doesn't make any sense. We can travel along the Siberian coast and then make our way with icebreaker to the Siberian sector of the Arctic. Then we just stop engines and drift with the sea ice. As the season proceeds, sea ice will grow, and by late November we'll set in solid sea ice. It will get colder, the ice will be will grow in extent and thickness, then we'll have to, by then we'll have a network of stations on the ice and some close and some 20 or 30 kilometers away. Uh, those are going to drift too, and not necessarily your way. We'll have a network of stations on ice with central observatory, the whole thing will drift across the Arctic. During the winter, it will be completely dark, and we won't be able to move. We'll just passively drift across the polar cap until we reach the Fram Strait. Strait. In winter, the ice is too thick to travel through the ice, so we can't break it. It will be too, way too dangerous to go on snowmobiles, and we have many controllers of big instruments for studying climate sh systems which we could never bring in on snowmobiles. <sighs> Knowledge gained from the expedition could transform scientists 
understanding of science, climate change and even help forecasters improve their predictions of weather in the UK, said Professor Rex, speaking at American Association for the Advancement of Science annual meeting in Boston, Massachusetts. What happens in the Arctic, where climate change is occurring faster than anywhere else on Earth, this BS, has a major impact on weather in North, Northern Europe and North America. Yet the forces of work, at work are not well understood, because gaining access to the region to carry out ground-based tests is so difficult. There are too many small-scale processes that in fact, climbing on a regional and global scale in the Arctic, so we can't observe from a satellite, said Professor Rex. <clears throat> well, you have to cut this short, but, uh, well, recorded that levels of Arctic sea ice show a much faster rate of Decline than computer simulations predict. That suggests vital information is missing from the models, the professor pointed out. Uh, like undersea volcanoes, da! Strong warming in the Arctic affects weather in northern Europe because it reduces temperature contrast between low and high altitudes. This leads to lighter winds that meander instead of blowing in a more contained Circular zone pattern to more frequent and cold air outbreaks from the Arctic. On October 17, 2008, Polar Stern was first research ship to ever travel through Northeast Passage and Northwest Passage. One cruise thus circumnavigating the North Pole. Uh, I didn't cut this short because I want to make comment here. I'm afraid that this ship could be crushed uh, by the ice. What if these people thought this one out? Uh, this is a place where if you go there, you're taking your life in your own hands because the power of nature is far greater than anything we have to offer it. And don't think that these ice flows, if they uh, wanted to, could crush, couldn't crush this shit. They can crush it just like we would crush an eggshell. Brave people, but so stupid. If you want to put something out there, put it, make it all automated so there are no people involved. So you don't have to mount a rescue mission, which would be nearly impossible in the Arctic night. Anyway. Anyway, I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.